Fatima girl, I don't care about what Angela got to say, your stepdaddy got to say, your stepmama got to say, and I damn sure don't give a damn what Zach got to say. Stand tall, mama. What's good, y'all? It's your good sister, Erica Bain, coming to you right here on Erica Bain TV with another Zatima video. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss out on any of my Satima content and conversations. And in this video, we are going to be breaking down season two, episode number 16, titled A Gamble at Love. Y'all, let's just go ahead and talk about it because Lord... Before we jump into this video, I have to let you know that this video was created during the 2023 WGA and SAG after strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the series being covered here wouldn't exist. Through the duration of these strikes, my company and I stand in solidarity with both unions and are refusing paid opportunities presented by struck companies such as the eight major Hollywood studios. Content created on Eric Vane platforms are independent of any struck company and not created in promotion of said company. Articles, videos, and audio posts are created in critique of the media in support of the artists who created it. It is important that you, the audience, know that these strikes are a result of corporate greed. The writers and actors have been victimized by major studios for quite some time and the time is now to demand fair pay and working conditions, standardized practices across streaming business models, and other terms that will ensure the pipeline for new aspiring creatives remains open and viable for years to come. At this time, neither union is calling for a boycott of any television or film content. If you would like to support either or both unions, consider donating to strike funds, walking local picket lines, and using your social media platform to amplify messages delivered daily by union members and leaders. Links to official websites and more information can be found in the description box down below. Videos explaining both strikes and continual strike news can be found on Erica Vane TV. Now let's get into it. All right, so if you watch Our Sister's Keeper, which is my live after show and podcast co-hosted with the wonderful Miss Allie Nick official, then you know that I did not enjoy this episode at all. Um, so I think in this breakdown, aside from communicating that, I really just want to hone in on what my biggest issue with this episode was. So this won't, won't necessarily be a full play-by-play -play breakdown of like what went down, but again, just me focusing on what I feel like was the worst part about this trailer and specifically, I'm not the trailer, the episode and specifically just the messaging. Like I am fully not behind everybody in Fatima's life conspiring to help her and Zach get back together after literally a day or two of them being apart, him going to therapy for one session, but then no real change behavior. And for people like Angela, who has been there a little bit longer than her parents, to have experienced some of the other things that have gone down and in, in, in what, you know, has caused Fatima a bit of heartache and to really have like a front row seat to the emotional roller coaster that Fatima has been on in their relationship. And then to now, because Zach look a little sad and sang a little song off key to be a hundred percent 10 toes down and advocating for him or specifically advocating for Fatima to take him back and walk back into a situation that is not actually set up for her good. I don't like that. I'm like, are y'all her friends and family or are you not? Because it's one thing to want a woman to be in partnership with a great man, to find love and to feel supported and to just get everything that she deserves out of partnership, specifically romantic partnership. But when that is not present, what the hell are you actually advocating for? And I feel like so much of what we saw play out by way of the dialogue and just the overall storytelling for this episode specifically was a complete like public service announcement for women accepting struggle love fighting for something that is not necessarily proven or shown to, to be fruitful or beneficial bare minimum better beneficial to their lives and like basically trying to coax black women by way of Fatima's story back into putting on a goddamn cape and trying to save somebody who specifically don't actually want to be saved, who don't think that anything is wrong other than, oh, I'm never going to cheat on you. 
that's not the only issue. And when Zach yelled that out after they had the dinner with her parents, I was like, sir, this is all showing that you literally don't get it. Yes, you threw Connie in her face and you lied and said that you slept with Connie. But that is literally the tip of the big ass iceberg in reference to the problems that y'all have in y'all relationship. The main problem that I feel like that is playing out specifically in Zatima's relationship is the fact that they are not equally yoked and it is not a true partnership. Fatima is doing all of the heavy lifting when it comes to emotional, mental, and spiritual warfare within their lives, both on her own behalf as well as on Zach's behalf for issues that have nothing to do with her. She is willingly walked into battle and is fighting all of these battles for this man. And then it's not even being met in return with understanding, not even being met with listening, not even being met with him actually trying to work on himself on the back end while she's taking all of the bullets on the front line for the problems and the things that's playing out within his life. And it's not fair. Simply and truly, it's not fair. For me to advocate or want Fatima, if I was Angela, for me to want my friend to get back with a man, I would have to see that this man is not going to sit up and sing off key and make this, this grand romantic gesture. But do you have the fundamentals of being able to sustain a healthy relationship with my friend? Do you realize that your lack of communication and your poor communication is something that's weighing on her mentally? Do you understand that all of the drama and the baggage that you come with is weighing on her mentally? Do you see the problem with calling the things that she's interested in like jazz and philosophy whack as, do you see the problem with that? Are you making an effort to learn and expose yourself to the things that she values in her life versus willingly allowing her to assume so many various roles and, 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 and throw herself into all the things that you are interested in and give, give, give to you all that she has. Meanwhile, you don't have to actually turn around and reciprocate anything. You don't have to take her to a jazz show. You don't have to take her to a museum. Hell, you don't even have to take her on damn dates. It seems... Are we ever going to get to the place where you realize that your penis is not going to fix everything and your penis is not enough to have her be satisfied in a relationship with you? That there's a little bit of work that needs to happen intellectually. There's a little bit of work that needs to happen emotionally. There's a little bit of work that needs to happen mentally. That is what I'm looking for in reference to change behavior and conversations. Stop calling me, asking me, when she coming home or why she not coming home and start calling me and asking me what's her favorite jazz artist start calling me asking me what's her favorite flower start calling me and ask me what was the last book that she read but that's the kind of friend i am if i'm gonna advocate and like root for you to get back with your man and i know that you're not getting the things that you need within this relationship i'm gonna help you in that regard i'm not gonna sit on a couch next to you and tell you how sad and pitiful he looks talk about how big his penis is and then tell you girl take your ass home even though he has yet to show that he's going to be able to even approach the table let alone come to the table with the things that you need meanwhile you are coming to the table and laying out a whole damn feast for his ass to eat what do I look like? This entire episode was a PSA and a rallying cry for support of Zach. And I'm like, well, where the hell is the support for Fatima? Her feelings are valid. Her apprehensions are valid. Being concerned of like how deep she's in so quickly with no real payoff for this investment in sight is real. And then you got your best friend now jumped on, on, on board. And now your damn mama and daddy who could have judged him, misjudged him by how they look, how he looked. He also said he was going to rob their ass. So there was no apologies there. Meanwhile, the parents is now apologizing to Zach for misjudging him. But he ain't apologized for saying he's going to come back and rob their asses in his disrespect. And then they are creating this whole dialogue revealing that her mama cheated and her daddy then lost his mind and had a whole face because the mama cheated all so that you can get to the point to tell Fatima that there has to be effort there you need to try you can't walk away if you haven't given it your all do y'all talk to your daughter because i'm gonna have to go ahead and assume that y'all don't talk to your daughter and you don't actually know what has gone down because mama has tried 
Mama has tried pretty much everything, and I don't think there's any more effort that Fatima needs to give. And Zach knew that when he said that he has experienced more effort than he deserves. Because this isn't the first time. There has been a hell of a red flag that Fatima could have walked away about face, just turned and left with, and she didn't. And now that we're at this place, it's literally the culmination, the mountaintop, if you will, of like enough is enough. Because there is no change behavior, there is no growth. You literally lean on the strength of your penis and your wallet and you run it out of money and the penis ain't even like, like it could be cool, but like you could do everything too much. That can't sustain y'all's relationship. And all of the dialogue at this damn dinner was directed to me, to Fatima. You need to stay. You need to try hard. You need to work. No, she don't need to do a damn thing else. Fatima has done everything that she could possibly do for this boy. And this is a problem that I'm seeing play out specifically within the black community between men and women of like we, as in women, sometimes get conditioned and socialized to be this never ending ride or die. And we got to compromise ourselves. We got to sacrifice so much for the betterment of these men who aren't taught or expected to do nearly as much. Almost as if we don't matter as people within our own goddamn relationships. Absolutely the hell not. And personally, when I really sit down and think about it, this episode is like, honestly, five years too damn late because this was old. Them ride or die days are over. This whole struggle love situation, that is done. Black women are waking up. Black women are realizing that more often than not, when we're in cases and situations of this ridiculous struggle love, it does not serve us to be the ride or die because we always die. Always die. Very rarely does the, the man now reform and then become who you had always hoped and dreamed that he would be. And then even when he does, why in the hell do you have to go to hell and back to get him to do it? No. Absolutely the hell not. I don't give a damn how good Zach and Fatima look together. I don't give a damn how good the sex is. Women need to have their needs met as well. In this episode, <laughs> It really just said to me that Tyler Perry thinks that women need to go back to prioritizing men in a way that sacrifices ourselves. And that's sad, honestly. Zatima as a unit, Zatima as a show, I think is a perfect grounds to really explore the conversation of black men and women in love. And if we're taking this route of all the drama and the goofiness and the struggle, this is a perfect situation to really be able to advocate for women finding their voice, communicating their needs and wants, and then advocating for themselves to get exactly what they want and deserve. And instead we have just gone back back to the man does wrong the man don't get it but the man don't have to the man gets to do the bare minimum and the woman has to be okay with it the woman has to accept it because girl at least you got a man no personally i feel like it's a stronger story to tell to watch zach actually grow to see fatima's mama and daddy apologize to him whether they misjudge him or not, to see that apology happen and then to see Angela jump on board and then, child, at the top of the episode, to see Paul advocating, trying to tell him what he can do to get back into a great place or on the right track with Fatima and his ass don't want to listen. It was just so infuriating to watch because everything in this universe is conspiring for Zach's good and he is giving everything and pretty much everyone the middle finger doing whatever the hell he wants and still getting what he wants now no they didn't get back together specifically in this episode but Fatima even being willing to try after he is doing damn near nothing the damn daddy had to beg him to come to dinner but you so-called want to fight for Fatima when the fight only looks like you trying to get her into your bed. 
the more I talk about it, and like, this is probably why it took me so long to record this video. This, this episode was really, really sad. It was demoralizing and it was sad. It makes me think about my experience as a black woman in love with black men, <laughs> as well as friends and just like the state of where we're at. And I just want better for us, truthfully. If you're watching this, if you're consuming this show or you're consuming sisters, just know that you really do not have to settle. You are not asking for too much to be heard, to be fully seen, to be met with the same amount or more effort than you provide in a relationship, to put your foot down and have deal breakers and non-negotiables. You're literally deserving of all of it. You're not asking for too much. You're not being a bitch. You deserve deep, meaningful, intentional, and honest love from a capable partner. I didn't know this video was gonna go this route. I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy. That's all I really got for this particular episode. I'll see you in the breakdown for episode 17.